Hey there, Marketing Analytics students. It's Dr. Baker. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be learning how to use RapidMiner Studio to complete an end-to-end -end prediction modeling exercise. Just like any predictive modeling exercise, that means we're going to have to import some data. We're going to have to prep and modify that data for analysis, actually conduct that analysis, apply those predictions to new data, and in addition, we will learn to report and analyze and explore the data uh, once we build our prediction model. There's some things you're going to need to gather in order to conduct this exercise. First, there's two data files. We have a prediction tutorial test data set and a training data set. In addition, uh, we're going to be doing quite a few different steps here and we're going to be building an increasingly complex uh, rapid minor process as we get going. So I've actually already provided to you a full process model that's completed here at the link and or wherever those links are provided from where you're seeing this video. In addition, maybe you just don't want to see the final solution, but rather you want to practice and work on a given part of the process file. And I have broken up the process file into four major steps, each one building upon the other. Uh, if you ever need to actually import a .rmp or rapid minor process file, once you download that file, simply navigate in uh, rapid minor to file and import process and uh, and navigate to wherever that file was stored on your machine and that's how you'll bring in that process so first let's think about the business scenario that we're going to be using to uh, practice this uh, prediction modeling exercise so let's imagine that uh, we work for a meal kit style company so in this particular case let's imagine that we were pilot testing a new meal kit program where we were offering the option that people could upgrade their uh, meal kit delivery service to entirely eco-friendly packaging. This additional eco packaging was going to add about $2 a week to their food delivery plan. So they would have to pay for this upgrade. Um, now, going forward, we, we originally just did a little pilot program uh, promoting this, this idea to 400 of our customers. And when we go forward, we wanna know who we really should be targeting um, with this new uh, food delivery plan. It's not cheap for us to indiscriminately um, try to get people to upgrade to this eco-friendly packaging because our current marketing strategy here is we just send this eco-friendly packaging to a given customer, include some marketing materials explaining the eco-friendly packaging, and then asking them if they'd like to pay the two additional dollars. For the types of customers who are absolutely unlikely or unwilling to sign up for eco-friendly packaging, that's a pretty costly little um, marketing communication plan, so we really don't want to waste any of our time or energy there. Now, in our customer relationship management system, for these 400 people that we had tested, we also captured some additional information about them beyond just whether or not they subscribed to the eco-friendly packaging. Um, when we first acquired these customers, we actually documented whether we had considered them a hot, warm, or cool lead. In addition, we have all of our customers uh, segmented into one of four meal profile segments. So, for example, perhaps segment two might be the vegan, veggie, gluten-free group. We also know how often they use our platform. We rank our customers from zero to 100 on our utilization of our platform, so this means People who score 100 are the most intensely uh, are most intensely using our online platform for recipes, social chatting, sharing, um, posting videos or pictures of the meals that they've made, and so on. Finally, we do have a net promoter score uh, measurement for each one of our customers. This is that survey question that asks how likely are you to recommend insert company name to a friend or colleague, and this score ranges from zero to ten, where ten means they are extremely likely to recommend. Our goal here is to take, uh, build a model and make a prediction on a thousand customers that we actually have not yet marketed to for this eco-friendly packaging. So let's take a look at our overall game plan uh, when we build out this prediction model. First, in our prediction tutorial training uh, data set, we have 400 customers. And you can see right here that we, of course, know whether or not they did or did not subscribe, and we have additional information about them. We're going to use RapidMiner to objectively calibrate a logistic regression model. 
So if you're familiar with logistic regression, what you're looking at here is the pretty standard format. So we're going to uh, build out these beta parameters. We're going to calibrate these to proper values such that we can then figure out what the probability of someone is uh, that they will not actually sign up for this uh, particular uh, eco-friendly packaging. Once we build a specific model, we can take that model and project those uh, predictions onto a thousand customers. And that's our prediction tutorial uh, test data set. And notably uh, for these customers, since we have not actually uh, marketed to them yet this eco-friendly packaging, we don't know whether they'll subscribe or not. So our goal here is to use that model to build out a new column in the data set, if you will, that predicts whether or not this person is likely to subscribe or did not subscribe. Let's take a quick 60 second introduction to just uh, orient ourselves to the Rapid Miner interface. So when you open up Rapid Miner Studio, you're going to see an interface that looks just like this. And what you're gonna notice in the big center here is our process area. This is where we're gonna build out our project. We're gonna add some operators and we're gonna connect them in a sensible sequence so that it builds out and deploys our prediction model. We find our operators over here on the bottom left hand side. This is where we can easily search for all the different operators that load data, manipulate data, analyze data, report data, and so on. Rapid Miner actually also has a nice little interface where we have uh, help and tips and examples and tutorials related to each one of the operators. So if we're ever confused on how they work, there's nice documentation readily available for us. In addition, a lot of times we have to tweak and adjust the settings for an operator and the upper right hand corner where it says parameters, that's exactly where we set and toggle those little switches to make sure they're working just right for us. We can also easily load, store data over here in the repository. At the top, you'll notice there's a design icon and a results icon. We'll be using these two icons to uh, both design and look at the results of our models. And finally, once we build a successful process or maybe we're partway through a process and want to see what it does, we will simply hit the go button and we will be able to see the results of that effort.